the you're recording so Great. margaret's in the audience if you want to bring her in okay so margaret is uh, sean will have to do that because i no longer i don't have control which is quite wonderful <laughs> I made you a co-host, Kathy, too. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. This is the January 5th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. And I want to go around the room to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. But as I do that, I also want to introduce a new uh, Elementary School Building Committee member, and that's Alicia Walker who is joining us today. She's newly elected to the town council and she eagerly raised her hand to come onto our committee. Um, so maybe Alicia, when, when you unmute, you can say a word or two about yourself to introduce yourself. So I'm just gonna go around in the order I see people on the screen um, and I will, you're on my second row. So I, just to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. And I'll also introduce the panelists so everyone can remember who's here. Mike. Present. Paul. Uh, Paul Bachman, town manager, present. Ben. Uh, ben Harrington, school committee, present. Sean. Sean Mangano, town finance director, present. Rupert. Rupert Roy Clark, uh, school facilities director, present. Jonathan. Jonathan Salvan. Uh, a parent of a Fort River, a couple of Fort River students um, and local architects that can be here, here and be heard. <laughs> Allison, this is great. Thank you, everyone. Hi, I'm Allison Estes, assistant principal at Wildwood Elementary, present. And Alicia. Hi, I'm Alicia Walker, I'm new incoming town counselor at large. I also have two children who attend Fort River um, and I am a lifelong Amherst resident. Uh, Tamara, or though Mike said everyone calls you Tammy, so you can tell us how you what you want to be called. <laughs> sure. Uh, Tammy Sullivan Daly, interim principal at Fort River Elementary School, present. And then I want to just quickly introduce the panelists, particularly because um, Alicia is new. So maybe the Danisco team could each introduce themselves um, and just the order I see it is Rick, Vivian, Tim, Donna, and then also Margaret Wood, um, that everyone go around and just say who you are. Hi, Rick Rice with Denisco. Hi, I'm Vivian Lowe with Denisco. Hi, Tim Cooper, Denisco. Donna? Yep, nice to meet you. Uh, Donna, Denisco, welcome to the team. Donna, you're muted. <laughs> no, no, we actually oh, heard her. Yeah, we heard it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I'll introduce myself. Margaret. Can everybody hear me? I'm Margaret Wood, and I'm the owner's project manager. So, so thank you, everyone, for getting up early on this New Year's Wednesday. Um, we we have a fairly full agenda, and I'm going to be turning it over to the Denisco team and Margaret Wood. Um, I think the first item when we sent it out is we've been sent a list of evaluation, a combination of priorities and criteria that the team is proposing to use. And oh, I see Phoebe has just joined us. Phoebe, um, welcome. And I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. So this is Phoebe Miriam is on the committee, Alicia. Um, so and Alicia is our new committee member. So the the I think the order that I sent the agenda is first we're going to be looking at the evaluation criteria priorities that will be used as we look at all possible options and bring in the information about the education program. And second will be the proposed uh, work schedule. Um, and and it's, it's organized in a way we can also see what's happening over at the school committee, where the school committee is gonna be doing some meetings. And then the third part is work groups, both um, a, a net zero energy and an outreach um, to talk about doing that. Um, in the scheduling, we still don't have a date 
and time that works for everyone. We set out three options and the most any option got was six and we're 12 people. So we still have to figure out the date and time that we will regularly meet as a school building committee. It has been Thursdays at eight. So I'm gonna leave that to the very end to not take time with trying to find a meeting time. So I think with that um, maybe too rushed uh, introduction, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Donna or whoever is leading on the first item is the evaluation criteria and priorities. And you've presented us with a draft list that you've been using in other places. So maybe we can all take a look at that. And I think the idea is we could discuss is something missing why is something on the list um, and how you're going to go about doing all of this. So, Donna, yeah. would you, yeah, would you like to put it up on the screen? Uh, let me. You, you, you start. Let me know. I have it. I can uh, share it. Sure. Why don't, Margaret, why don't you go ahead? Because I think contextually there's, um, we, we want to talk about it, but. but time um, out, time out, time out, please. Yep. Um, Kathy, we have two hands up. And so, oh, okay. so sure. you know, okay. Alicia and I, but one thing I went to is we should, does, who's going to be taking minutes? Is that Margaret going to be taking minutes just to be confirmed that we have someone taking minutes? Yes, Margaret, Margaret's been doing minutes for all okay. of these meetings, Paul, Thank so you. She, she'll continue to be doing that. And Alicia? Is there somewhere where I can have access to the agenda? Uh, yes, it is. Um, I can try sending it to you. It's on, if you go to the school, our town website for the elementary school building committee meet, uh, page, the agenda is posted there. Okay, thank you. And, and the materials that you're about to see are also posted there. Um, and, and we will keep posting there as well. So you can go back and see materials we've looked at before. Alicia, if you want to listen to the conversation, I'll, I will download the agenda and email it to you. I think I have your email. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Share screen. Sure. That'd be great. Thank you. So I just want to say this document, this is Danisco's document. So Donna's going to talk about this. Let me work on getting Alicia the um, agenda. Great. Thank you. Um, so I think before we get into the document itself, and um, there, there are two components to this, and and this document is really intended to help um, objectively evaluate all of the options and or or uh, concepts, I guess we should say, um, whether you know it's something that's real or MSBA is asking us to just just look at something. So it it really is just an objective way for us to look at all of the options. Um, and, and, but we've developed this in other communities. We would ask, of course, that this gets um, developed as, as what's important to Amherst. Um, we have identified priorities and then below would be the evaluation criteria. So the priorities are what's most important to you. And then you take the criteria that weigh against the priorities as you start looking at the individual options. Um, these are what we've put together. Uh, we believe, I'm sure there are other ideas and thoughts and priorities and criteria that you would like to use to weigh the options. Um, but what we would like to talk about, and, and maybe this could be a homework piece or, or how, we, how, how it makes the most sense. Some people probably haven't had a whole lot of time to even really look at this, um, was a couple of things. One is how best do we want to make sure that the, we're hearing what the community feels is important in way of pri priorities and then criteria. And then how do we en engage them? Do we ask them to weigh in on? Um, do we get their input? And then we put the priorities and evaluation criteria together from what we've gleaned from the community forums. Do we have a working group 
that might really focus on this because there's a, a little bit of lifting on this, trying to make sure that we understand how we're gonna weigh each of the criteria against the priorities. So this isn't something like we can do in an hour and have a quick conversation with 15 people sitting around the room. I, I think there needs to be a little more thought um, on how we best wanna do it. So instead of going through each of the items, I think maybe holistically would be a better way to start the conversation today, if that makes sense. So I guess I would, I would like to say maybe Kathy or, or Mike, you both seem to have um, pulses and of, of um, the community. Does it make sense that we have a, establish a working group that can help us reach out to the community, understand what the priorities are and what the evaluation criteria will be. And then we can talk about how we want to weigh the criteria against the priorities. I'm looking for, um, I see Mike's hand is up. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think it's hard to do in the large group. I think um, I want to thank Phoebe. I believe Phoebe brought up this idea multiple times in multiple meetings. Um, so uh, I, I fully endorse that concept because I think, you know, there's a lot of business side of, of things that we need to do. And I think that if we have a, a, a smaller, leaner group that can uh, facilitate some of that work, I think it'd be really critical. So I just, I like that idea. I want to thank Phoebe for raising it. And Mike, just let me ask on, on the concept of, would you make it a, a subgroup, um, a subcommittee of the building committee? Would you want to do a crossover with the school committee? Um, you know, and it, it's, and I'm asking because the more we do uh, an official, we, we will be having to post Zoom and figure out who the participants are. Um, so that's, it's a question. Yeah, so um, I'd be curious what Phoebe and others think. Um, I think to be quite candid on the school side, we are um, at or beyond capacity at the moment, given our efforts to retain high quality in-person learning during uh, a surge that we haven't experienced before while schools have been open. So I, I wanna be really cautious, particularly about the two school leaders on the call. And in normal times, uh, I'd be, completely hitting up Allison and Tammy uh, for work like this. I don't feel like I can do that right now, uh, given the needs in their building. So I do think uh, I, I tend to be glass half full. So I think the, uh, there's an opportunity maybe for, for folks in the community to take on perhaps larger roles uh, in this engagement than you know, often happen when you have people in kind of formal leadership roles. Um, so, so I look at it as an opportunity, but I, I, you know, I just want to be really cautious about what I ask folks to do. We're already doing jobs that are um, gargantuan. So, um, Paul, Paul, maybe you can weigh in on the notion of, you know, if it, if the working group is broader than a subgroup of our committee, um, we we need to. If it's a subgroup of our committee, we'd always post any meeting and and that group could go out more and, and go to the other meetings that are being set up to get feedback on these criteria. If we want to have a working group that has different people in it, some of us and more people, I think we have to go through a posting for membership, Paul. So maybe you could just go through what are yeah. what but the constraints or the um, guidelines yes. are on this. So if this body, i.e. the elementary school building committee creates a new body, that body is subject to the open meeting law. So whatever, even if it's a subset of <clears throat> people in this space, it, it does has to comply with this open meeting law, but we can, this group can just create it. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, whether we can just pull people in, I think, um, I, I can check on that. I, it would be nice if we didn't have to post it and, and have go through the council appointment process and everything. Um, it'd be nice if this body could just say we've invited a, you know, these three other people to participate in that committee. Let me just double check on the how that really works. I can get an answer for you that on that today. Okay, that would be great. And and then I guess I just would like to see of 
the committee members, I mean, Phoebe has regularly um, said that she wants to be part of the outreach group. I'm totally willing to serve on a subgroup looking at uh, the criteria and priorities, and I'm available to come to the meetings, Mike, that you'll be organizing at the school. So, you know, to the extent we want to get community input and put it up on a screen, um, I'm available to do that. So I, I'm just lo looking for if we make it a subcommittee, who would want to be on the subcommittee um, for this? And let me just say on subcommittee on a working group, the two others we've talked about, one would be called outreach. So we could combine this with the outreach. Um, and then and then the one is on net zero energy, the actual building of the building to achieve net zero goals. So I'm, I'm looking around, you can raise hands, you can do anything you want. Yeah, Phoebe. So Phoebe, I think is saying she would, she would want to serve on this subgroup. So if, if Phoebe and I are both willing to do that, and then Paul, you can check on whether we can get, you know, a couple more people. Um, you know, and, and Mike, I know you've said the school committee itself is is spread out, but if there's any school committee member who's beyond Ben who wanted to be part of that, that would be another way we could think about this. I, you know, Paul. Yeah, so I think it'd be helpful if we sort of, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be happen right now, but write down a paragraph about what this group's charge is, what we're asking them to do, and if it's the group that's going to expand into the outreach group, which sort of, there's some logic to that, like you said, Kathy, that this might morph and also be taking on the outreach efforts. Um, so I think that just if we sort of can really define, if we are going to reach out to the public to say we need people to serve on this group, whoever okay. is able to appoint, we should be able to say, what is this group all about? Okay, great. And I see Phoebe's got her hand up. Phoebe, and then I see Rupert's hand as well. Um, I was just going to say, I, I think that um, I'm very interested, Paul, in what, in what you have to say uh, as you sort of look up what we need to do in terms of the logistics of it, because I think if we can ask people from the general community, um, I think it helps sort of show that we do want this to be a committee community sort of hand in hand project um, and I think that that's important so um, if we whatever we need to do to kind of lean that way to really bring the community into these conversations in a in a you know sort of on a ground level I think would be a really um, positive step forward for us Rupert Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have a question probably for Margaret and or Denisco. I'm wondering uh, if you would recommend trying to separate out components of uh, option evaluation, like just the site evaluation as a, as a separate component to try to chunk it down to smaller decisions. So I want to clarify something. Um, and Donna, maybe I'm not sh I'm, I'm stating this because I want to make sure that I and you all are on the same page about this. And I'm just gonna share this document again. Um, I took it down so we could talk, but... Um, <clears throat> so there's there's two components yeah, to Margaret, the document. Sorry, Margaret, just could you make it smaller so people could see more of the document? That would be great. Make it smaller? Yeah, all I'm seeing is the priorities. It doesn't go beyond yeah, that. So scroll, we're not seeing the bottom next part. So yeah, I was, I'm, I'm yeah. going to scroll up and down. Okay. I'm going to okay. explain. There's two okay. pieces. So the top of the document is a list of priority, possible priorities, which are, are not in order, right? So I think what Donna is asking is to that the committee would be focused on. And, and I will also say not everyone's... <laughs> If, as individuals, I don't think we would necessarily put these in the, the same order, right? But I think the committee needs to have an order and they need to take input from the community to develop that. Then the other piece of this, which I think is what um, Rupert is commenting about, then there's a long list of evaluation criteria. The evaluation is, 
in some pieces of it are factual. <laughs> some pieces of it are more qualitative. And so this evaluation and, and the list of what's on here, I think the Danisco team is also looking for input on whether there's anything missing. But the evaluation criteria are more criteria and not priorities. Does that make sense? There's really two pieces to this. So, so yeah, thank you, Margaret. And to answer um, your question, Rupert, the criteria are just criteria that we've put together um, that have been important to other communities. So there could be more or less. Um, and then the other component to it really is how we're even gonna weigh the criteria against the priorities. So um, some of it, like um, Margaret said, if you even just look at the site, the site's gonna be what it is gonna be, right? The question is, what are the priorities of the site? Um, you know, for example, um, outdoor learning, maybe, maybe that, maybe that takes the top priority or something, or, or that has that, that has, um, you, you weigh that the most or something, uh, as opposed to it improves offsite traffic, right? So that that's a qualitative, you don't even have to think about that one, that one's just a given. So there are going to be um, some things that are just going to be it is what it is and and then the other ones are are going to be what's what's important to the community but um, i think once we establish the priorities and make sure we have those right and then you're gonna you're gonna base each criteria against that set of priorities for example site right the site is going to influence traffic it's going to influence uh, some of it will, will be the educational program. Um, and then even to a certain extent, the equity, um, one, once we define what the equity is. And then we even have on here, future use of a building or site not selected. So uh, that, that we can have that conversation separately. But um, once, once we define the priorities and the criteria, and we present the options to the working group and then ultimately the working group to the committee, it should really all just fall into place, if, if that helps. I'm just, um, I'm, I'm just, I don't see other hands up right now, but I just wanna react um, to what I think Rupert was also asking that, you know, uh, in, in terms of getting input on these, some of the input is we are, of course, going to look at the costs of construction and the site and traffic. That's not a, is that on the list or it's not on the list. And those will be um, major points of comparison as we look through the options. Others, some of the others, I think what you're asking is, are we missing anything that should be a priority? how high a priority is, is it so that if, if outdoor learning space is a very high priority um, or the design of the building has a lot of flexibility internally so spaces can be used for small groups and large groups, then that will also, it will have an impact on the construction costs. So I'm, you know, some of these things are interactive because the content of the building would make it bigger or smaller or organized in different ways. So we may have to, in a working group, just make sure there's nothing missing from the list. And then people um, do the very, very important. Um, and, you know, for one, you know, our group may not feel that the future use of the building that we're not selecting is, is, of an order of magnitude in, in trying to figure out what we're doing with the school as the others. So I, I think they're just, they're different things on this list in terms of the information you'll be gathering. And will you on all of these be getting, populating it with, if you want this, this is the implication in terms of space or design yeah, it, it, um, thanks, Kathy. I, I think what 
you'll find sometimes is that your priorities might be mutually exclusive. <laughs> so, so then, so then what we're going to have to do, and, and that's why the criteria is going to hopefully inform in a very objective way, what, what option really ends up being the best option without, without emotion, without um, bias or anything. It's, it's going, it's just, one is going to hopefully rise to the top. So um, I, I think going through this, I, our goal for this working group, and, and thank you all um, for participating because it really is important, um, is to make sure that the priorities are right and then that the evaluation criteria is what is also important to the community. And, and then again, the rest will shake out. So we would imagine the first working group, um, as soon as we can set it up would be great, is for you to kind of comb through this and make sure that it matches Amherst goals and objectives. And then we can um, then start having the conversation about how do we weigh the, the criteria against the priority? So I, I see this as a multiple step. I, there's no way we're gonna get through all of this in one working session. Like this, this is probably gonna take some time. Um, but once we have this established, we can then the working group and then through ultimately the full building committee seeing the work of the working group, we'll see how it all, um, kind of shakes out as the options are developed. Okay. If that makes sense. It's John. So um, quick question. So who will be leading the, is there gonna be a public engagement process for developing these or is the working group just doing that themselves? <clears throat> and, if there, and if there is a public engagement process, is it the working group that's gonna be holding some sort of forum or, or doing the, um, however they reach out to the public or will it be the full committee that does that? Um, I, I'll, look, I'll look, for, I look to the committee to react because I think we could do it either way, Sean. I mean, if I think it would, to me, it would be important that everyone in our larger group take a look at the list um, and I'll resend it to people to, to weigh in on it and then if it's the smaller group then goes and presents it at a community forum and goes and presents and gathers information and brings it back. So not the full committee doesn't have to meet each time we do that. It's a more efficient use probably of people's time. So the, the working group is then gathering information to come back and guide decisions rather than I think there are 12 of us and maybe there'll be 13 once we, there are still a couple of vacancies on the committee. So should this, should committee members get their input to the working group and then the working group will uh, digest that, put together a list and then they'll present that list and get feedback. I just wanna make sure, I'm just a yep. little confused about what the flow of um, steps are. Well, I'm, I'm volunteering to be on it. Um, and so what we can, do, we can do starting right now is just say that you most, almost everyone has had it since the middle of December, but I'll resend it and get any feedback on it to me. Um, and then Phoebe has raised her hand as being interested in it, in it. So you could get it to the two of us and just basically marked up something's missing um, comments. And if we want to just do it to one person and we'll gather that um, to try to figure out how to do the next step. Once Paul tells us, can we expand beyond our committee um, and how quickly can we do that to get some input to then create a way of going out and getting input beyond the, the group that's on today's, this morning's meeting. Does, does that work for people as a way of proceeding? So I'm looking for, when we see the timeline, we, we do not have lots of time. So we have to also do everything we're doing in a very open and outreach way, gathering information, but not be slowed down by trying to figure out how to set up a committee um, when we need to be able to do that quickly. Um, yeah, so Kathy, yeah, to, just to add to that, thank you. And, and talking about the timing, which is where I was about to go, um, 
we, and, and we'll share the schedule um, and kind of review the schedule with everyone in a minute, but um, we would love to have this in place um, when we start evaluating the options uh, for the preferred, um, the PDP, the preliminary design program, which will be submitted to MSBA. So we can use this as one of the components of our submission to MSBA, which would also support why some options work better than others. Um, this, and, and we can get into um, having to look at just the K6325 solution, but this will, so we would like this in place Probably we're, we're, our goal is to submit to MSBA March 15th. So, yeah. so we're looking to hopefully have this done maybe by um, our second visioning or our second community outreach would be great to have all input, show it to everyone at, at the second community um, forum. And then, you know, we can make sure that we, we understood and heard everyone and then we can evaluate it. The heavy lifting right now is going to be making sure the priorities and the criteria are correct. So Donna, it just this is a little interactive with um, the dates that have been proposed where the we we uh, had a conversation with the Danisco team and with Margaret um, before uh, the holidays, just well, right at the cusp of the holidays. And we tentatively said uh, doing a community-wide forum on February 3rd, which is a Thursday um, in the e evening, early evening, either 6.30 or 7, we haven't posted it. So we could feature this criteria um, and we were gonna post it as a build, school building committee meeting. Um, and is that a point, Donna, that you would want the working group to have met, gathered some information, Feature, feature this. So that's the first one that I know that's on the schedule, February 3rd date. Yeah, you're muted. Donna, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Right. Um, we can, uh, I would love to roll it out at, at the February 3rd, right? We can have done a lot of our homework, okay. clean this up, let's present it. We would have had a couple of visioning meetings so um, that those, those might help inform some of the conversation as well. And then uh, roll it out on the third, try to get some feedback. I think we were looking at, um, I, I have one single screen this morning, so I'm, I'm a little bit at a disadvantage here. We were looking at another community forum around the week of the 22nd or something like that. So um, then we can, roll it out, roll it out, get their input on, on February 3rd, get additional feedback um, at the next forum. And then that will almost tee us up for where we want to submit to M to MSBA. Okay. Margaret, does that make sense? Or even yeah. Danisco team? No, yeah. I think that's I think that's exactly right. And Sean, did that answer your question, my response as a way of re getting reaction from our committee? Um, yeah, just yeah, I think so. So, I mean, the main thing I wanted to make sure is how do we get input into the priorities and then what's gonna happen. And then I assume it will come back to us at some point to um, say, yes, this is what we wanna use, so. So we, we, we are scheduled to meet every two weeks. We don't have the day of the week that we're talking about yet, um, but two weeks from now, we would be meeting together as a full committee. So if Phoebe and I, if we can work in between and if there's someone else, we could just save that someone else wants to join, we can collect what we get from the group. And then there are some school meetings that are being set up and we can make sure this gets in front of that group as well. So when we, if there's anything that's happening between now and when we meet together, we can bring that back to the full committee, Sean, you know, uh, in terms of input. And that will bring us just before the February 3rd um, evening meeting. And, and do you want input on like what stakeholder groups we 
think you should reach out to. Um, I, know that, I mean, there's a lot of obvious ones that we know about, but there's probably some um, other groups that we may want to say you should at least get input from um, from this group as well. Would that be helpful for people to send um, the stakeholder groups they think should be um, this should be presented to? I think yes. Phoebe. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I'm looking for Phoebe's face. I can't see everyone's face on my screen right now. So Phoebe. Yes, yes yeah. I think that would be helpful. Okay. okay. The, the one caveat um, I would like, if anything that goes to Kathy about this, if you could CC me, yeah. committee members would be super helpful. And obviously also to Phoebe at the same time, so. Yeah, no, no, it'd be great, particularly so no, nothing gets lost in this process. So I have, I have a question um, in terms of uh, operating costs. Um, and, and my question about operating costs, Donna and Donesco team, is what people aren't seeing right now is we have, because um, we, 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 we proposed and MSBA accepted two study populations. One is K through five in a consolidated school and one is K through six. The operating costs, I'm assuming it's of the school that we're renovating, building new or um, uh, uh, ad reno. But if we, as a town were to operate three schools, so the, the small school option, the 320, there's an operating cost impact on the town because we're operating three schools. Mm -hmm. um, would, would that or could that be um, helped develop so that people could see that um, or should that be off the table? So I'm just on under operating costs, I completely understand if we're talking about this building, um, you know, and what we're doing with construction and ease of operating and costs, but operating three versus operating two has an operating cost impact. I'm, I'm seeing Mike's hand is up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it has an operate, it has a uh, operating cost impact on the staffing side as well. Yeah. And that's what I meant. I, I meant. Okay. I just, I didn't know if you're talking about more of the utilities. Building, and, yeah. and no, I meant the big picture operating costs that, that everything that's in the operating budget that we're operating more teachers, more staff, more overhead, and we're continuing to operate another school. We're not taking it offline. So in utility costs, those kinds of operating costs. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Donna, and, and yeah, Kathy, I, again, this is, um, this is what the working group, we, we would like to, we, we can, you know, we, we've it sort of attempted to put what the priorities are and, and Margaret is so, so agile here putting everything as, as we talk. Um, but this is what we want to vet out with the working group. Um, and, and it would be great to have an initial conversation with the working group to make sure everyone understands I mean, we sort of know what we put down here on paper. It might not be clear. So it would be great to vet this all out with the working group, make sure that the description of the priority is clear, and then, and then we can move forward. And, and we could be missing something. Yeah, so Paul? Thank you. Um, so just be clear, what we're saying is that we're taking this list of priorities we want a subgroup of our group, I mean, just in terms of our time efficiency here today and for the future, we want a subgroup, which right now is, is just Phoebe and Kathy and anybody else can jump in as well. And you're gonna meet say next week with Margaret and sort of clean this up or high prioritize it, make some decisions, bring that back to us in two weeks to this group and say, here's what we did. Do you, like, do you approve it or not? Is that the sort of game plan for this? I think so, Paul. And then I just have to look at the schedule that, and, and Mike will know better, there are some meetings that are being set up as the schools are doing um, education program. If there's an opportunity to take this list out to a broader group than just us, we, we would bring that back in two weeks also. You know, just on a, if there's something that's missing from the list, um, something, uh, so we would see whether we can, I mean, we're talking about two weeks from now, so it's clearly mm -hmm. we're not, it, it, we're not going to be doing a lot of that. Donna, 
Thank you. Um, yes, Paul, I think that would be the initial goal so that we can then roll it out to the community yeah. so that it's clear in your mind and then we'll add to it or subtract from it um, right. based so, upon the input. Okay, so our subgroup goes, massages, massages this, brings it back in two weeks. We as a committee say, looks good or changes a few things. And then as a committee, we say public, here's what we've come up with. What are we missing? And then, so we've got sort of a process going forward and that by the end of January, perhaps we've got this list pretty congealed, right? Perfect. Yes. Right. Our, yep. Our com first uh, community forum, I think is February 3rd. So that's perfect. Yep. Okay. So, so while we, while we have the full group and then we can look at the schedule next, but I have that my question, first question was on operating costs. My second on the people who know how the programs run, the dual language program that's currently running in Fort, Fort, Fort River, um, I, d does it have space implications beyond, so you've got ed educational program fit, but should it be broken out later on, Mike, in terms of how well does it run? If you run it across, again, I'm looking at across the study populations, a school with just 320 in it versus a 575. So should something like that be specifically put on that we, we know we're gonna want operating in the new or ad reno school? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I agree with what you said. Okay. So, those are those are questions I had when I was looking at it, and and if people can send um, anything else, um, my initial reaction on the line, which is on tw line twenty six right now, um, the future use of the building not selected. I thought that is not as high a priority for the school for our school building committee. It may be a high priority for the town, but I'd like people's reactions to that. You know, on a a, a site evaluation. If the empty school can, the the choice of which school will be empty, and if that's the 575, it's it's something to consider. But I don't think of it as a top level consideration. So if people can get me get us their thoughts on that, that would be useful. Is there anything else, Donna and team? I know you've started looking at the sites. Um, you know, you've been physically out. So when that information that you're gathering on um, water tables, depth, other kinds of things that you've started doing, when will, will that information be available? And I'm assuming that goes into this evaluation grid. Uh, yeah, Tim, Tim, you want to just give an update on what we've accomplished already? Sure, uh, thanks. Um, so yeah, we've been out there digging test pits, um, walking through the buildings with our mechanical, electrical, structural engineers. Um, a full report of the existing conditions buildings will be produced in the coming weeks and will be part of the PDP submission. Um, and that background information that we have on the buildings and the sites, we will then use to um, weigh against all of the options and the criteria that we're setting forth. And it just gives us the background information that we're going to need to say that Wildwood Fort River is better in this way when it comes to this certain aspect of the site or whatever. I mean, at this point, we're not making any decisions or judgments. We're just gathering information so that when we do have our priorities defined, we can use them to evaluate um, potential challenges or benefits of each of the options. But um, in terms of schedule, we'll have reports developed and written this month, and then it will all be wrapped up and submitted with the PTP. Okay. So um, I'm looking, are there any other questions on how we're going to work with the criteria? Um, right now, and if they're not, maybe we could look at the, the schedule and, and in the context of the schedule, we talked about setting up another working group that would be a subcommittee of our committee um, that would focus on the net zero side of the building. Um, so I, I just 
And I think, Danisco, in your schedule, you wanted to have some meetings, potential meetings on that in January. So maybe we could have the schedule up and also talk about a potential subcommittee of our committee that would be meeting with Danisco um, to talk about what we see in net zero, what they're planning on looking at um, and initial discussions. You're done talking, it, I, yeah. right? You were trying no, to- right. No, no, that's okay. I just, I just, I guess I just wanna make sure no. um, that um, everyone knows that we're not handing you a homework assignment and asking everyone to go do it. Danisco and I'm and I'm assuming Margaret would are going to be involved in all of these working groups, and that's really important that we will facilitate them. Um, we're not expecting you all to just go off and come back with with your homework. So um, Danisco will will be there every step of the way, guiding you through this. But it's but great. going yeah but going back to the net zero yes we would love to get that conversation going sooner rather than later I think we threw out some dates for the week of the seven seventeenth I think Tim is that those were the dates I think it was the two next week yeah. wasn't it next week we put out two dates that would be next, next week next yeah. week yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so so our goal you know recognizing the importance of net zero and how we're going to achieve net zero depending on the options that's going to greatly inform the size the cost the location it's going to really greatly inform the solution so we we don't want this to be how does how does net zero fit in we want to make sure we understand what is important to the town and how we're gonna achieve net zero so that we make sure we incorporate those um, into each of the options and how, how well each option meets those goals. So really this, we, we want this not, it's almost as important as your educational program. Like we just wanna make sure we get this right. And it, you had, um, when we talked before Christmas, you had talked about trying to have a meeting next week, but you were going to check with your team side on what times were available. And I had an initial discussion, well, Jonathan, you can speak for yourself, I, of a potential subcommittee of our, our team. Um, and I thought maybe Jonathan Rupert and Ben, because two of them know the facility and that Jonathan is an architect and a builder would be a starting point. So we, we wouldn't have to immediately create a larger group. We could create a larger group later, but that group could be interacting. Um, so I didn't know whether you were gonna think of next week and also what people think of a subcommittee of the, of the two people who know the facilities and Jonathan. And I would join that group too, because I'm, I'm interested in it, you know, and I wanna keep following it. So, so Kathy, you may yeah. not see, I sent and forwarded an email from Tim late yesterday. They, Tim was able to confirm that the original times that they had set up with their consultants, which were Thursday the 13th from 2 to 3.30 and Friday the 14th from 11 to 1 are times that the consultant team is available. This meeting would be on Zoom. And so the, that's, I think, the time we would look, we would should pin down one of those meetings today based on the availability of the building committee members who are interested. So say the, can you say those dates again? Sure, it's Thursday the 13th, which is, you know, week from tomorrow from two to 3.30 and Friday the 14th from 11 to one are the times that the Danisco team offered. Okay, so then, then I have two questions of the larger group. One, the idea of a, a subgroup, and um, I named three names just because I thought they were a logical fit. Um, and, and I did have a chance to talk to Jonathan before to see if he's willing to do this, because he, because I know, well, everyone has a full-time job. I'm retired, but, um, and then those do those either of those two dates work and would anyone else want to be we can we can post this as a subcommittee meeting and it will be open 
it will be on Zoom and the public can be part of it in terms of comments. We will capture all of the information and all of the discussions. So it won't be happening off in another realm. So any reactions to the idea of a subgroup meeting with the Danisco team? And Margaret also has a, a net zero person that's been working with us. Um, meeting next week at one of those two times. So maybe Jonathan, if you could tell me first, what, do the times work? Do the idea, does, does this idea work as a way of working on this issue? Well, it certainly works from my perspective. Uh, I work, it would work for Danisco as well and, and Margaret. Um, I can do both those times. I don't know about Ben or Rupert. Um, if either Ben or Rupert are talking, you're muted, so I can't hear. And I see Paul's Hi. hand up. Yeah. I'll unmute. Um, yes, I was thinking that it would be good for me to uh, learn more about what's being proposed for the new building for net zero. So I'm interested. And I could make either meeting. Uh, slight preference for 11 to 1 because it's slightly less chaotic when, uh, for our department. So the Friday time. So I, I see Ben is unmuted, but Paul also has his hand up. So I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to look at all the screens at the same time. Yeah, so I was just gonna say, I think this is a great approach. I think if this, those three people, I think we should settle on a date and time today. And so the public can know that this is going forward yep. and, and get a movement. So it's great. I appreciate this plan, Kathy. So, so Jan January 14th sounds like a date that works for both Rupert and Jonathan. It works for me. Um, and then, and it works for Ben. Okay, so we will post it as a subcommittee event focused on net zero um, with the public generally invited um, in terms of participation. We'll take public comments. The agenda will clearly say public comments. And and then I, I then the the you know, Paul's got his hand up to yeah, I, I think we Paul. actually should take as a committee we should take a motion to create this committee. Okay. Um, so Thank I'll you. move that we create a committee um, uh, on net zero um, that wouldn't that appointed by the, the the chair of the committee and my understanding is that it would be uh rupert and jonathan and ben and and the chair okay i second the motion and since it's as a motion we need to take a vote so uh, and, no that's okay uh, i mean it's uh zoom mate has always made this a little bit harder but we need to do it um i need to do it as a roll call vote so i'll just call out names um, as I see it on a vote of creating the subcommittee. Paul? Yes. Kathy's a yes. Mike? Yes. Uh, ben? Yes. Sean? Yes. Rupert? Roy Clark, aye. <laughs> Jonathan? Yes. Alicia? Yes. T Tammy? Yes. Phoebe? Yes. Allison? Yes. And Jonathan? Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I exist in two places, but okay. I only get one. <laughs> oh, you only you only get two once. <laughs> All right, you do. You're the second Jonathan. So it's unanimous plus one. Um, so so we, we have created a subcommittee. I will get it. I'll work with Angela to get this posted with an agenda that will be broadly to initial discussion on net zero. Um, what the town expects, what's in our bylaw, and and with your technical people talking about your approach. So, so um, it will be uh, posted. And there is a lot of there is a lot of interest in the town on this. So I'm glad we're starting this sooner rather than later. Yeah, I, I expect we're going to have public in the in the meeting. We'll be interested. Yes. And so the date, the date, just the date is January 14th from 11 to one. So we're confirming that date because um, that's the date that works better for Rupert. Do we want to, so that's a two hour, two hour meeting and agreed that it could be a long meeting. Do we want to set it up for that whole period of time? Well, if we, if we, if we set it up, Margaret, as a two hour slot, we 
use the, our Zoom capacity to do it because the town orchestrates them and we can always end it early. Yeah, okay, that's good. It's, it's harder to add the half an hour because of the way we use our Zoom accounts. I, I would envision um, not, nothing can be accomplished in one hour, especially the initial meeting. So I, I would wholeheartedly um, expect that, that we'll utilize at least the first round for the two hours. But Margaret, I just want to go put this on the calendar. And I think we have a tentative hold for MSBA from um, that morning. So I just want to make sure that's the 14th. And I was showing that we have a tentative hold from 10 to one with MSBA. I just want to make sure that we don't have a conflict there. Well, that would be a conflict for me, but it wouldn't be a conflict. Oh, it would be a conflict for you all too then. For Dennis, yeah. Well, we, we, can team, we, can team, we can divide and conquer. Um, I, I can just go sit with our friends at MSBA. That, that's not a problem. Um, why don't we just leave it alone and let's see what, how, how MSBA plays out. Okay, there are two other hands, Mike's hand and then Rupert. Yeah, so I just uh, want to note that it's nine o'clock. I know Tammy, Allison, and I are probably going to have to okay. scoot in a little bit. And I didn't know if there were any specific items that you wanted to make sure that um, sort of the educational side of our committee is here to talk about. Um, I think the answer is definitely yes to that. So let me just get Rupert's hand if we can move to the next topic. Rupert? Uh, I'm able to make the Thursday meeting if that uh, gets us a better chance to deal with the uh, with all of the stuff that's on everybody's plate. That's fine with me. So Donna, does that work? We'll just shift the, the net zero meeting to the 13th. You're muted, Donna. Yeah, I was checking the calendar. Um, what what time did that, we say? That time slot was two to three thirty on the thirteenth. Tim, that works for you. Are you TC on the calendar? Tim, you're muted. Yep, yeah, I have a booster appointment at that time, but uh, we can make that work. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of, one of the times that Tim had offered. I think yeah. that that's a good idea if we could do that because it, we don't have a lot of control of where the MSBA meeting is going to land. And I think we want to come out of this meeting with both of these, with that meeting set. Okay, so um, that's that's the date we'll post. So if people don't mind, let's can we shift quickly to the development that's underway on the educational program, um, Mike, Mike um, so that we don't lose you. And you'll have to unmute. I, I didn't. Okay. I, I wasn't going to speak until you know <laughs> um, until there was something to say, but um, I, I didn't know if um, Donna or Margaret wanted to talk a little bit about kind of more schedule and timeline things for that. I can certainly jump in, but I think they have all the the information. Yeah, sure. I'm I'm happy to just jump in. Thanks, Mike. Um, we have um, organized a, a, an initial kickoff meeting with the leadership team um, for this Friday. And it will be uh, Mike and the assistant superintendent, three principals, SPED director, IT director, curriculum coordinator, family outreach, um, Ben Harrington, and uh, Denisco, of course, Margaret and David Steven will all, uh, all be in attendance. And our goal there is just to make sure that we understand the work that's been completed to date since um, David was involved till present. And then just make sure that we have everything teed up for the visioning meetings that we have organized for January 13th and at the 26th. Margaret, do you have those times? Do you wanna bring that schedule up that we said we were gonna do one in the morning, one in the evening? Yeah, sure. Um... Let me, um, so this is the document that I sent out last night and it's not necessarily easy to view. So can everybody see that? Um, I, I just want to sort of back up and say, this is, this schedule is actually 
if you look at the whole thing, it takes us through the end of feasibility. Um, but I'm gonna, we're gonna focus right now on, um, if you can see the gray bars, this is February vacation, April vacation, and summer vacation. What you can see is that the content right now is really in the sort of between now and summer vacation. So let me blow this back up. Try not to screw it up completely. Direction here. There we go. So um, you know, this is on its way to creating what you all have, you know, clearly been talking about us needing, which is on the website for people to have a kind of overview of the process. Um, and there's a lot of caveats on here, but in a nutshell, um, what's up at the top are what I would call milestones um, that are really at, dictated to us by the process. And in that case, it's the submissions to the MSBA, uh, cost estimates that are related to those submissions, and MSBA board votes. Then there's a chunk here that's about meetings. But what I want what I want to focus on right now is this piece, which is what we've been talking about this morning. So, as Donna was saying, um, we we've, we've identified two dates for public ed visioning meetings. Mike has suggested that one be in the morning and one be in the evening. So there's one on January 13th, one on January 26th. Um, it would be actually great um, to get uh, from this committee if it makes sense to do the morning one first and the evening one, because we do, these are two things we should set the dates and the times for today. And then um, we've also, identified dates for community forums so but let's stick with the public envisioning because that's the piece we wanted to talk about while mike was still mike and the principals were still available so donna did you want to say anything else about this did we lose Donna? yep yep nope, nope. Oh, there she yep yep um no i i think this is great so um this is where we are we look forward to really um delving diving into this this is a really important component of the project and we want to make sure that um it's fully vetted and uh we're right on track to submit to msba so um oh, mike has his hand up i think sorry mike thank you yeah so i just you know if the committee decides this we just need to get this information out soon um right. so i think i'm glad you uh kathy thanks for pushing this to the agenda at this time but i think you know we do have a friday newsletter that's updated uh that that's widely read it goes to all staff and all families um sorry i'm gonna mute myself because of the so so mike i think that this has been discussed back and forth now so these dates are good for the community forums and your school meeting and the the third the february third evening slot seemed to work on everybody's calendars and i just need from Dinesca, we can post it um i need a sentence or two describing what that is um and we had tentatively said seven at night it could be 6 30 at night if someone tells me that's a better start time but we we'd host it as a building committee meeting um but it's a community forum um, and, and we're going to be inviting the council to it. So any number of counselors who want to come, school committee, so it would be a, a broad outreach to the community on the that February 3rd date. And then the others are your public ed visioning pieces. So I think working with Margaret, you should get the information you need to go out in the flyer. So Mike's hand is up and Rupert's hand is up. Yeah, um, yeah I just go, go ahead, ahead Mike. I was just going to offer if you if you like our assistance in developing a flyer, we're happy to do that. Yeah, I think the thing that so if we think of 
multiple meetings, right? Two public ed visioning, two community forums, as well as a number of building committee meetings, which are open to the public. I do think communicating in, in relatively short order, not just that those meetings are happening, but what the goals of the meeting and what the public participation will be like, because uh, we want to be really clear, I think, with members of the community who want to get involved, that um, what, you know, some people might be interested in going to all, they're really invested in have capacity and have the kind of privilege of time. Other folks may really want to be involved and, and you know, but only on one level. And then I think something that I know I heard uh, with last time I spoke to Donna was also for people who aren't involved, making sure they're videotaped and emailed out to the community members who want to participate, but the time and, uh, you know, they have different ways of participating. So, you know, I think there may be other ways people want to participate, but I think just the timeliness of getting communication out on here's the meeting times, here, here's how you access them, and here's the goals of the meeting um, would be really, really important in, um, in the near future. Okay, so you'll work with Donna's team to, to, do, to draft that, and then we'll, we'll sh I mean, not just draft it, create it, and we can post it on our project website, on our website you can post it on your school committee um and i'm i'm seeing two hands up too i think that's a good way of going rupert and then alicia just a question um do we need to make sure we have a quorum for these public ed and community forums we the public ed we don't have to be there correct this is school committee is conducting these is that correct Mike? I don't think it necessarily has to be a school committee. It's that, you know, working with the architects uh, and David Steven, okay. who's the critical piece, he's the educational planner on the okay. UNESCO team, uh, would be mostly facilitating them. Uh, I can be corrected, but on the community forums, I agree with you, they should be posted. But I think if we're truly doing a forum and hearing from the community and not participating and sharing our thoughts, if there's not a quorum, the meeting could still happen. Right, okay. because it's not, it's not, there's no deliberation by committee members. And, and my personal recommendation is that's the way to go is that it's not an opportunity for us to white, wax on what we think should happen. It's quite the opposite. It's, it's an opportunity to listen. And if we really held to that, um, I think it's a, it's a good idea if we can, if people can show up to hear it directly instead of hear a summary that someone will give. But okay. um, that, that's my two cents. But someone can tell me I'm wrong and I'm happy to be wrong and corrected. So, uh, okay, so I think Rupert was also asking on the public ed visioning that, that those aren't, the school committee is, members are not expected to come to those, it, but we can, is, is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay, Alicia. Um, I just quickly wanna go back to outreach to families. And I think like a newsletter is great, but I also wanna make sure we're thinking about things like translation and communicating with families who aren't just English Spanish speakers, because um, the newsletter does go out. I don't know if it goes out in other languages besides English Spanish, but making sure that we're communicating in other ways and we're getting to the families who don't regularly read the newsletter as well. Alicia, Alicia, can I ask, would you be willing, do you have thoughts on ways of doing that? And if so, I mean, you could be speaking directly with Mike and or Margaret on, on doing it. You know, we don't have to do it right now, but, but I think Phoebe is also interested in broadening the how do you know something is happening um, very much so. so. Yeah, I, I would be um, definitely willing to offer suggestions and to work collaboratively collaboratively with them, but I don't know if I have capacity to be on the outreach committee, although I do have a lot of ideas in regards to outreach. So I'd be happy to find some other times where I could send in some suggestions. And I think that some of it, if we really want people to be in the know, <clears throat> is gonna be going to the people with the information um, and not just sending it out electronically, which I think is gonna be challenging because of COVID and because of the times, but not every family communicates the best through electronics. And so we have to be a little bit innovative there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jonathan. There we go. Oops. Can you hear me or did I just mute myself? <laughs> we can hear you. Good. I, I just wanted to kind of uh, um, agree with Mike on, you know, when, when we're at these things as, 
or I would encourage uh, you know those of us on the committee to to sit back and listen um, and and not <laughs> and not feel that we have to uh, you know participate uh, in in any deep way. I mean, I, I've always found them when I pre when I've sat back and participated and listened at at these events. I've always found them really helpful in understanding what what folks think of as important. Um, but I do want to just kind of ask uh, Paul. I, I do feel like if if it's something that we're not we as a group are not scheduling, if a lot of us show up there, um, you know, are we could we accidentally even though we're we're going to sit back and listen. Could we accidentally be triggering a public meeting mm -hmm. issue? Yeah, so I can, that's a quick answer. So we typically would post it as a public forum, post it as a meeting of the school building committee. If we get a quorum, we're covered. If we don't, it's not an issue. Okay, so I'll, I'll work with Angela to make sure we post it the right way, Paul. Um, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, so I think to Alicia's point, um, I am starting to feel like the 13th may be too soon. Um, and perhaps we should look at the week after just because, in, you know, if we get a newsletter out on Friday, that's the seventh. You know, our rule of thumb for big events is try to let people know at least a week in advance. Uh, I know I was part of the folks that came up with the 13th, but just I'm starting to feel anxious about that uh, in, in terms of outreach. Um, and then to answer Alicia's question, we do, our newsletter does go out in three languages. Um, it's English, Spanish, and Portuguese. I'm not suggesting that that takes away the larger point that I heard about uh, newsletters not getting to um, the full community, but I think it's, it's a valid one um, to have. I think in the warmer weather, we have done things where we've gone into the community, into um, high density housing. I know Tammy's done that a bunch at Fort River of late uh, this fall, but even when we were talking about back to school, Ben, I think you were at least at a couple of those um, events from a school committee perspective. It's hard in winter, right? Um, it, it's hard in COVID, but it's also hard in winter. And so I'm, uh, any suggestions would be, and I'm not putting Alicia or anyone else on the spot, but I think uh, if it was 70 degrees and sunny, it's really, you know, we can do lots of neat things uh, in person. I think when it's sleeting and and I've been texting throughout because of icy roads and things like that it, it makes it it brings about some challenges of doing some in-person uh, types of things and so uh, you know any suggestions people have would, would be great and I think you know much to Alicia's point I think the capacity question and I mentioned this to Margaret and Donna yesterday the capacity question is very real for us in the schools at the moment um, and I think you know I want to be really uh, I don't want to shy away from doing what needs to get done, but I also want to be very realistic about our primary and exclusive focus right now is keeping in-person learning, high quality in-person learning happening for kids. Uh, that's different than two months ago. Yes, we were doing that, but we were focusing on that plus other things. And uh, at the current time, that is uh, dominating our attention as it just Omicron has, has forced us to do. So I, I want to be really candid about the balancing act of not just myself, but Allison, Tammy, and other school staff. And I think I, I mentioned to Margaret uh, and Donna recently that uh, we may not get the same level of turnout as we might get in typical times, uh, no matter what our outreach is, because many, many people are suffering from COVID or they're taking care of family members who are suffering from COVID. Uh, people are also struggling to manage themselves, even if they're not directly affected by COVID, just because it's, it's a hard time to be here, right? Uh, and so, so I, I, you know, I, I guess my caution is I don't want to have a new building or an ad renovated, I say new, I don't mean literally new, a new or ad renovated, uh, an improved building pushed back a year because of the moment we're trying to engage people. So I wanna right set our expectations that if people don't come, it may not mean, and I don't think it does mean that they're not engaged, they don't wanna be involved. It really may be that this is a tough moment for people to stay engaged in projects, um, even though they're really, really important because you know, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of need, we're in a different place than we typically are. We're a different place than we were two months ago. And, and so uh, I just wanna kind of right set our expectations for what we can reasonably uh, ask folks to do at the current time, um, you know, and, and not have a, I think sometimes when we don't get as many people to a meeting, there's a, there's a sense of disappointment that's reasonable, but, but I, I really wanna stay away from any like, why didn't more people come and any blame kind of language. 
um, just because I, I think it's, sorry for this long-winded monologue, but I just think about this stuff a lot uh, in everything that we do, not just the school building project, is how do we get the work that needs to get done done? How do we have uh, open outreach, but uh, how do we also understand that this is a difficult time for folks? So sorry, I'll, I'll mute myself literally and figuratively. So Mike, um, you know, there's no, nothing special, just so you know about, you know, these dates. I think, you know, you, you had offered them as times that looked good for you and your staff. Um, but, you know, we could totally bump the one that was for the week. Well, we had said the 13th to the next week. Yeah, if we, Mark, yeah. sorry. Yeah, we, we so, so let, sorry, I have my hand up. I'm sorry. So, so the reason, the reason why, um, so it's twofold. So Mike, I 100% we're, we're all um, going through this and, and we, we truly understand um, everyone's priorities right now and, and what, what, and capacity, right? It's more of a capacity issue. Um, the, the reason why we set up the Ed Visioning meetings, first, I just wanna make sure that everyone knows the Visioning meetings are gonna be held virtually. Th those are not public. It was the community forums. Our goal was to have public uh, in person. So, and if we need to shift those to virtual, that's fine too. Um, but the Visioning meetings, uh, David, Stephen really feels that he's able to get a lot more out of when, when we're virtual. So, so hopefully that takes a little bit of the edge off. Um, but the whole goal and the reason why we ended up with these dates really was so that we could submit the PDP as soon as possible in March. Um, we have to go before school committee for, with the draft. We get their input. Um, they, they were kind enough to give us a um, special meeting, I believe, on 222. And then we're going to come back on the 8th. So, so when you back it all up, we're really up against it. So shifting these dates right now um, probably could be a little problematic. Um, we have one third one that has yet to be put on the schedule, but I think we were looking at two February, um, around February 7th to wrap up the visioning to share what we've learned and incorporate it. So, so there, there's one more visioning meeting, just kind of a culmination of. So we get um, everyone's capacities right now. I, I, anyone that has any time just to pop in for a few minutes would be great. I, I just, I don't think anyone would, um, try to shame anyone. I, and I, I understand what you're saying. I just, um, in order for us, for us to stay on schedule, I don't think we have much capacity here to be shifting these. That said, I think you've done an amazing job with outreach to date. You understand your community. I don't, we're not starting from ground zero. So I don't think there'll be any, um, really radical changes to the work that's been done to date. So I feel really good about that. And then it, we can continue to involve folks um, once, once we get to a final solution and what the building may look and feel like. So I, this, this is not that component. So there'll be um, hopefully opportunities when all of this calms down to, to, engage other people. Mike, is your hand back up? And I think Jonathan, your yeah, hand just got left up, yeah. Yeah, just, just briefly, that makes sense to me. And I, I like that we're having two sessions. So I feel a little better thinking it through that we do have the you know morning and evening one that's two weeks later. So I would just ask that if, if you are able to put together a flyer with the language about different sessions, um, if it's an if you if you wouldn't mind sending it to me in an editable format, because what we'll do is we'll translate that into multiple languages. Um, we were able to do that very well. And if that could be done by Friday at noon, sorry to do this like business kind of stuff on the call, but we're not going to see each other no, uh, between it's now fine. and then. Um, then we can get that out and really feature it in our newsletter. So not that that's perfect, but at least we can get out there and put it on social media and other things as well in, multi, in multiple languages. Alicia? Um, I want to say this respectfully, but also honestly, in that I don't think that we have been doing a sufficient job with outreach, uh, just because in my capacity as a parent, 
I have not been reached out to in regards to any of this. I also don't always read the full newsletters all the way through because we get so many communications from the school on a daily basis that are quite lengthy. And I never know, some of them are repetitive. We get the same messages about COVID every single day. And I don't know where to look for the information and where to find it. And sometimes important information is sandwiched in the middle of the newsletter emails. And I know a lot of parents don't even read them at all or have the ability to be communicating regularly electronically. And so that, <clears throat> sorry, is also an issue <clears throat> when we're only holding things virtually or in which people can only submit feedback if they're physically available to be somewhere, whether that be in person or online. And so even if we don't move the dates, which I understand um, is sort of limiting because we have a timeline, I think there needs to be other means to participate, whether that be in writing, um, in a survey, and, and things that are not primarily or only electronic is what I am trying to say. So I think um, if we can figure out other ways that families can submit to us their feedback um, and not change the dates, I think that that will be sufficient, but I think that there needs to be other means. Allison. Um, I want to thank Alicia for being um, clear about her perspective, because I think that this is a really difficult time to create the conversations that have to happen. And I'm wondering um, if it's something that I, I, sometimes we're looking for volume of, of, of uh, feedback, like how many people, how many families can we reach? But I'm wondering if we can think of it more as like a focus group. If, if like I was able to say to myself, okay, any, any communication that goes out from Mike or from this team that I commit to having discussions with three families who are, I know will have children who are affected by this school. And I know that they are representing part, parts of the population that might not have a voice. And I commit myself to having conversations with those three families anytime a big conversation comes out. And I can't say I could talk to 20 or 30 because I just can't do that. But at least we would have some feedback from people and I would be able to say, I can have that conversation. I can promise you I could do a conversation with a handful of people so that we have some information going out to people in a real way that feels connected. And I know that they would be impacted by our decisions. It's just a thought. So I think Alicia's hand is is up again. Um. Yeah, thank you, Allison. I think that was helpful. Um, and I agree in terms of like not thinking about success in terms of the volume of, of feedback that we get. But I also want to make sure that we're not just receiving receiving feedback from the same people every time, which is what usually happens. And so reaching out and getting the perspectives that we don't usually get. And in order to do that, we're going to need to do something different. And so even if, I think it could be helpful, someone earlier mentioned identifying stakeholders. So like identifying different groups of people that we say we want to hear back from at least one person that belongs to this group of people or to this population so that we can make sure we're getting a bunch of different ideas and perspectives and that we're not just relying on the same feedback from the same people. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that where we take this from here is that Dinesco will be working on writing up what each of these events are in terms of a goal and a timing. And one thought I had, Mike, is I don't know whether you can do a flyer as opposed to, you know, if in, not just embed it in a newsletter, but there may be ways of taking flyers physically out as pieces of paper. Um, and if it isn't for the 13th, if it's, you know, as we think of we going forward, there may be a way of um, getting information directly to where people are living. And, and I don't wanna even have a long discussion. I don't know what is possible. So it's, it's a thought of a different way of getting, you all come, here's, the, here's this meeting. If that meeting doesn't appeal to you, here's another meeting. Um, and here's where to find the information if you can't come to any of them. Um, Mike. Yeah, so I'm sorry, my internet cut out. So I missed the second half of what Ms. Walker said. So I apologize, but I think I got most of it. Um, and I think 
Alicia's right that we do send a lot of emails as a school system. Um, and um, I wonder if the email could come from the building committee, if it would stand out a bit more, even if it is electronic communication, you know, we can send it. If we have an email to send out, we can make an school building committee, you know, we, we can figure out how to do that on our end because we have access to the parent listserv, but I think it would distinguish from the many other emails that families get, and it might be a way to, um, it's not, it's not a perfect solution. Doesn't, I'm not trying to say it addresses everything that, that I, and I didn't hear everything, but the, the parts that I heard uh, of what Alicia said, but it might distinguish it as opposed to yet another email from me or W.S. Moreland. Um, and uh, hopefully people would, you know, could, could track it a little bit better than they track uh, emails, you know, just this, this time with COVID, it's just, they're getting, there's a lot of emails, right? And I'm trying to keep them as short as I can, and I'm failing miserably, right? And put lots of things in bold, but it's better than the alternative of not communicating about COVID. But, you know, this is not COVID, but I think people get another email with my email address or westmoreland at arps.org, and, and it, it is overwhelming, right? And, and I, it's, a, it's a constant struggle, but it might distinguish it in a way that uh, more people may pay attention to it and, and be able to track it a little bit better over time. So I'm I'm conscious of the time, um, so I'm, I want to make sure if there are any other comments that I take them, but I, I do want to open it up for public comments as well. And just one note on these dates, we don't yet have a date for the next building committee meeting, but I think Mike is going to work with Allison and Tammy to see whether some of the dates tentatively it will be it will be Thursdays at eight our normal time when you see building committee going across there until we find another date and time um, and whether it's if we started earlier so Mike I'll just work with you to see if we can get a date that works for more people. Um, so is there anything else on this we will Paul. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think I think Mike's idea is really that's that's one way to, one step we can take to is I think if it came from and we listed all the committee members on the notice. I mean, it should come from your email address, maybe Kathy. But uh, if we sh so people might start to we need them sure. folks to have as many sort of ways to connect as possible. If they recognize a name on the committee, they say, oh, I know someone. So I think that's a really good way to start this. And we, we can I'll talk with our community participation officers to talk about how else we can get the word out. This is, I think we have to make a super effort on it, but recognizing everything everybody said is, is a, those are all true things, so. Thank you, Paul. I didn't mean to, I, I, I wrote down, we'll do this, but I'm glad you said we'll figure out how to do it as well. Uh, Vivian and then Jonathan. Yep, just a couple of comments or, and questions. Um, are there a lot of parents who drop off in person at the schools? Does it make sense to do a poster um, or something, a, a board that's on an easel that you know has just general information about the building project and here's what's coming up and you could translate it. it it's just one more way to reach out to folks if, if people show up in person. Um, it's something we do as we continue into design because we'll share images of the progress um, and design to get people excited. So it might be something to consider. And we're happy to, again, print large format boards for you if that would help. So that's one uh, item. The second is, Margaret, I think we should add um, below the net zero meeting the pr priorities and criteria meeting because I don't want to lose sight of that because we need to get that on the calendar. And, um, you know, again, as Donna said, Danisco will participate in all of these meetings and kind of help kind of guide the discussion so that um, we'll give you our background information to help kind of make decisions on your end. Thank you. Um, Definitely good ideas. Okay, Jonathan, and then Tammy and Allison. I, my my comment is only unfortunately that at, at this point I have to to leave. <laughs> I didn't okay. want to drop off without saying that I was leaving. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Sorry. No, yep. Phoebe Phoebe texted me. She I think she has dropped off too. So um, this is the pace of our meetings is going to also be the density of our meetings. I think. Thank you very much, Tammy. Um, actually, Allison had her hand raised first. So, Allison, I don't know if you want to go. No, is that all right? Okay. Um, let me go over my hand. Okay. 
So I love the idea of visuals. I think that that appeals to a lot of people, learning styles. Um, I do worry, uh, given how, like, I think it's like 20% of my family come and pick up, but I also worry about the safety of having some type of poster because we have two lanes. I don't know. I just worry about the safety, so I'd have to like think about it more, but I do love the idea of trying to provide or create some type of visual, but I'm not sure about a pick up and drop off. Um, I love the idea and I thought of the safety issue and I thought maybe it's a sign that is at pickup that says check for building committee email. So it's very clear because we can't have people walking up to the sign and looking at it. But if they're driving by and they know important email from building committee and if we were able to do it, a big sign that goes on the buses and that would catch all of those kindergarten parents who are forced to go to the pickup to pick up their student. And they would see a big magnet that says check for building committee email. And it's not going to get lost in Mike Morris emails. It won't get lost in Debbie Westmoreland. It's a different thing. I think that has a lot of potential for just letting people know that this is something important. We put it out just on that two days that it comes out and we remove it. So it's not, you know, we just we, they have a visual that this is something that you have, but it doesn't stay up all the time because that's when people stop looking at it. But um, I think that's a great idea. It's a really interesting idea, Allison, to put something on the buses because they're essentially moving signs that are not just people at the schools are seeing. Uh, uh, Alicia and then Sean. Um, yeah, I think that those are all really great suggestions um, and very creative. I think the bus is a good idea because they drive through communities. So even families whose kids aren't on the bus might see them because they will be out in the communities where the children live. So I think that that's a great idea. Um, I also actually have to leave at this time. So I just wanted to say one more thing because I know you all will be picking meeting times um, at the end of this meeting. And so I will rearrange to the best of my ability to make it to any meeting that I can. However, I think we should think about having them at different times uh, because I am a parent of children who go to the elementary schools and my drop off time is eight o'clock. So my mom brought my kids to school for me today. But if I had to bring my kids to school, which many parents who have a stake in this meeting would have to do, they cannot be here at eight o'clock because they will be bringing their children to school. Um, and so I think that that's just something very important to think about when thinking about when to schedule the next meeting for this group. Th thank you. Um, we will, we'll, we're going to search for a time that works, but thank you very much. That's yeah. great. And if you just um, can let me know what time you all decide, I will make it happen. But just to think about that in regards to um, your sure. families who would want to be involved. Sean. Um, I just want to let you know, we do have one invoice to approve before, um, before we go to public comment that we do have one. So is it, um, are there any other committee comments discussion at this point? Um, we can do the invoice, which I, of course, forgot to put on the agenda. I'll start making it a placeholder. Um, I put it. I put it on there, so it was on. It's the, on there, Kathy. <laughs> oh, good. Sean put it on. Good for you, Sean. So, um, so Sean, will you show the invoice, and then um, we'll entertain a motion. I think we still have a quorum, so. Kathy, I move to approve the invoice as presented. I second. Are there um, any discussion or are we ready for a vote? Okay, if you take it down, Sean, then I can see who we've got in um, the committee. Uh, so I'll just go through Sean. Aye. Yes. Kathy's a yes. Paul? Yes. Uh, ben? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Allison? Yes. And Mike? Yes. Okay, one, two. Okay, the invoice is approved. Um, is, it, is it all right for everyone if we now open it up for public comments? Okay, 
Yes. Okay. So, Sean, if you'll help me um, with the screen to see if there, if we have any public that would like to make a comment. Do you want me just to bring them into the room? Yeah. Okay. So, Sarah Ross, I'm bringing into the room. Hi, Sarah, if you unmute your mic and tell us who you are and then who you are, where you live, and then your comment. Sure, yeah, hi all, thanks for this meeting today. My name is Sarah Ross, I live in Amherst, um, lifetime resident and graduate of the schools and really excited about this project. So thanks for all the work that you all are, are putting into it and appreciate the vibrant discussion around outreach um, to folks like me and other and other parents. Um, I want to throw out what may be a horribly naive idea uh, as someone who's not an educator and currently in the thick of it. And I appreciate all of Mike's comments about how overtaxed you know, educators are in this moment. But I wonder if there's an opportunity to actually you know, use kids and their parents in the classroom um, to get some initial feedback. Uh, so as a way to kind of get the word out that this project is happening. So some simple exercise, a flyer where kids, you know, say three things they're excited about from a new building, three things they're concerned about, and, you know, kind of um, structured as a way for kids to go home to their parents and, and talk with their parents about that and, and come back and turn it in. So a little, a little mini assignment that, you know, could be really light touch, but really as a way just to like engage kids and their parents uh, and in that way, kind of get folks aware that this process is being kicked off and that, and that it would be a way to also get contact information out so that parents know who they can reach out to um, on this. So just one thought about outreach. And then I also wonder whether a letter to the Amherst Bulletin uh, toot sweet about you know, these, these new dates, maybe from, you know, from Kathy talking about this process uh, would also be a way to, to get more public engagement and put, um, and then, you know, going more towards the electronic side and certainly appreciate that we need to, um, have a balanced means of communication. I wonder whether, whether it, there isn't a simple kind of survey monkey that we could put together that would collect some public input again, really, really like touch nothing that's too difficult to create or too difficult to move through, but that, whether that wouldn't be another, create another channel for, for public input around um, the building. Thanks. Thank you for your comment, Sarah. So Sean, um, uh, for some reason, I'm not able to open that, the page, or do we have anyone else? Yeah, nobody else has their hand up yet. Okay, um, wait a minute to see if any other public comments. And People should know who are in the audience. You can also send comments directly to me. And um, if you have written comments and I'll make sure I share them with the committee. Um, so uh, if things occur to you later. So I think I- uh, We do have uh, one, we have one more. Okay. Uh, Maria Kapicki, I'm gonna to promote to panelists. Okay. Welcome, Maria. If you unmute, you are you have joined us. Thank you. Um, in terms of outreach, uh, there's uh, several important populations that I, I don't want us to forget. This building project is not only going to impact families who currently attend Wildwood and Fort River, but it will also deeply impact families that are at Crocker Farm. And it's also really going to be important to remember to let people know that if this does go to consolidation, that families who are currently districted to Wildwood and Fort River, some of them will be going to Crocker Farm. So Crocker Farm needs to be included in this communication. It's also important to include families of middle and high school students who may have upcoming kids who might be at this school, but also have the experience and will have input. And then uh, finally, um, it's not just uh, families with students, it's community members, it's town members who will benefit from this 
project as well as as the the building will be a resource um, for them as well in many ways. So I uh, just want to make sure we keep our eye on that. Uh, I think the idea of a flyer going home to all families is is a, a great idea. We also can, I, I think, look at texting to townspeople to uh, school committee, uh, sorry, school community members as a way of outreach. So some thoughts to keep in mind. Thank you, Maria. I think if we have no other public comments, I think uh, we have completed today's agenda and then some. Uh, this was, a, to me, a very rich discussion. I thank everyone for staying with us. I know it's really hard for both Allison and Tammy because you've, you've got a, a cl class is starting at eight in the morning, as we heard, um, but I really appreciate you making it. And we're gonna try to find times that work for everyone so you can continue. Uh, to be involved and then take it not just at the building committee, as Paul said, we will be working with the council and other means. Um, we have something called Engage Amherst. And after this, we can talk. Sean is in charge of that. It's a way of getting, inf getting information out, but also getting comments in. And we just going to have to figure out how to put the school project up, you know, at the right timing for it. So I, I think I'm going to say, unless I see any more hands up, um, yes, Sean is raising his hand. Um, were we gonna talk calendar and days or is that gonna be um, through email? I think we're gonna to have to do it through email because we, we sent out three days to ask people whether they work for them. And the most we got on any of the dates and time were six. Um, so we're in and, uh, Allison and Tammy both pick different days um, and different times. So we're going to try to do it again, um, but we will have a meeting in two weeks and okay. assume for right now it's eight in the morning on Thursday until we change it. So just hold that as the placeholder. The 20th. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Margaret. So, so two weeks from now at eight in the morning, unless you get an email that we found a day that worked for, and we each time we're checking, we're checking with the Dinesco team and Margaret as well. So we're trying to make this work for everyone. So we unfortunately don't currently have, the, the, it actually eight in the morning on Thursday got the most votes. It did get the six, but it, it, it didn't, we, we'd like to get to a, a fuller group. So I, I wanna thank everyone. And I, I particularly thank the team that I think was working right through Christmas um, uh, on and over here in Amherst, walking our soils and going into our buildings. So we look forward to a, what looks like a pretty active and a condensed schedule. Thank you very much. And we're, we are adjourned. I think we are adjourned.